today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Yo, I don't understand why this guy can't just keep Coretta Scott King's name out of his mouth. What up? It's your boy Trend Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. I got a big show set up for you guys. I love Mondays because there's like two or three days worth of news to cover. So y'all know the deal, man. Get your ear pods in, get your headphones on, turn your volumes up. I'm about to start the show. Let's go. Jonathan Majors breaks his silence on his guilty verdict and opens up about his support from Megan Good. Yo, Jonathan, my brother. <laughs> Yo, this guy breaks his silence and then pisses off the black community and black women. Take a listen, man. She says inside the car, you hit her in the face, yeah. twist her arm behind her back, fracture her middle finger. Yeah, that did not happen. But you're confident you didn't cause I have no them. question. All right, so that was the clip about him, you know, not feeling like he's guilty, not um, agreeing with the verdict. And then he goes ahead and says this. Actress Megan Good has remained by his side, even present for our interview. How would you describe your relationship? She's held me down like Coretta. I'm so blessed. Yo, I don't understand why this guy can't just keep Coretta Scott King's name out of his mouth. Like, I don't understand why he needs to keep referring to Coretta. And he was with a white woman and now with Megan. Like, you're just pissing off the people who you're trying to reach. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I was so with him until he made that stupid ass comment. Like, it was just so dumb of him, you know? Like, he got dragged for saying it when you know the video leaked and they played it in court the people were saying well, why was he telling this woman to be like Coretta Scott King and, and Michelle Obama and 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 how does it make your girl feel you know what I mean this is the second woman who you're now referring to Coretta Scott King your first white girlfriend is like oh I want you to be more like Coretta and then now you're like Oh, Megan, she's so supportive. She's being like, uh, like Coretta, you know, like, how about she's just being Megan? How about she's just being amazing? How about she's just being supportive? You keep referring to Coretta. Like it just, you know, you're just, he's just pissing people off in, in true Trent fashion. I always try to see the other side. And as a man, I understand, um, looking to a black woman, um, as, as a reference point, like Michelle Obama or Coretta Scott King, et cetera, right? I, I totally get it. Like, I love Michelle Obama. I love Oprah Winfrey. But he's just not using it in the right um, circumstance. Like, you maybe like, if I was, for me, being a single guy, and if somebody were to ask me on a talk show or a podcast or something like, hey, what kind of women, what kind of woman do you like? then I could say, you know, for me, I would like to one day find a woman like a Coretta Scott King or like an Oprah Winfrey or a Michelle Obama, somebody who's going to hold it down at home, somebody who's going to be my rock, somebody who's going to hold me accountable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you just, it's just not attractive to women or to people when you're already married and then you're referring to another woman as the inspiration when you already have a woman. And I just don't understand why he doesn't, see that that disconnect and him saying it to his white girlfriend and it being caught on camera was already embarrassing enough and the fact that he's just doubling down on it now again me even trying to see his side of it like i don't see your side of it at all jonathan like i just and and on top of it what makes it even worse is that you're doing this during an interview which is purposely orchestrated to come back out and garner support for for from the population from your fans from people who's watching um to try to you know get yourself back in in good graces and get yourself back in movies and this is just making him just like i don't know man he's totally distracting from the fact that he was found guilty um in a case where you know, he didn't necessarily, where, where most people didn't necessarily feel like he's guilty. So anyways, I just felt like this was a horrible PR move. Let me know what you guys think. Um, does this distract you from the, the fact that he was found guilty while most people thought, you know, he should have been found not guilty? Um, and uh, what are your thoughts? You know, sh sh should a married man be referencing other women's 
um, as his inspiration when he already has a girl. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Joe Coy makes a joke about Taylor Swift at the Golden Globes, and it does not go over well. Um, and also people have mixed reactions about his monologue. Uh, take a look. The big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. There's just more to go to. Here, sorry about that. No, I thought that joke was actually kind of funny. Um, and I think that it necessarily wasn't a dig at Taylor Swift. It was a more a dig at the NFL. So I don't know why Taylor would be pissed off about it. But I think the bigger story should be the fact that his monologue wasn't all that great. Um, people are saying that like the room was stiff and um, that, you know, like people were you know, the people in the room are, are, are so uptight. You know, you're talking to the biggest celebrities in the world and, um, it's hard to, to make them laugh. And, you know, there's a couple of comedians that came to, to his defense of like, somebody gave an analogy of saying, that's the, you know, trying to make a room full of, um, uh, millionaires and billionaires and celebrities laugh on a, on a night when they're trying to, when they're about to win their awards is equivalent to a comedian trying to make LeBron James laugh at a game seven before a game seven, right? Like going into the locker room before game seven. I thought that was a good analogy. Like it makes sense, but what doesn't make sense is that this is not the first award show that a comedian has tried to make jokes at. And I have seen many comedians at many award shows make the whole room come out and burst out laughing. Is it a tough room? For sure it is, but that just means that you got to make your jokes even better. Now, I like Joe. I've seen him on The Breakfast Club a couple of times. I've never seen his stand-up, but I have seen clips of him on YouTube where he has different variations of Asian accents, and it's hilarious. He's a good dude. He is funny when I've seen him on The Breakfast Club, but I watched the monologue. It just wasn't good. He even said his monologue, excuse me, he even said his monologue wasn't good. He's like, man, some of these jokes I wrote, some I didn't write. And the ones that you're laughing at um, are the ones that I wrote. So he is even saying that his monologue is not good. He's trying to blame it on other people. But regardless of other people are writing your jokes, you're the one who's delivering them and you're the one who's picking them. Like, I don't feel like these writers are forcing you to say these jokes. You know what I mean? And anyways, I just thought the, the Taylor Swift joke wasn't bad. It was that his monologue was bad. Um, and I really don't think it's fair to blame the room because we've had hundreds of award shows going on for years upon years. Um, and I, we've seen comedians totally kill the entire room and have people burst out laughing. So anyways, that's just my take. Let me know what you guys think. Did you watch it? Did you even watch the Golden Globes? Um, I was watching Sunday Night Football on my laptop and I was watching the Golden Globes because I knew I had to talk about it. Um, and it's, I, I like the Golden Globes because it mixes TV and movies where like the Academy Awards are just movies and it could get a little bit boring. But, and when I heard that Joe was hosting, um, I wanted to just, you know, tune in and see, but let me know uh, what you guys think. Let me know what, uh, if you think he did well, and let me know what you thought about the award show in the comment section below. Oprah Winfrey says there is no beef between her and Taraji P. Hinson. I heard I was trending yesterday uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. There's no validity to there being a thing between Taraji and I. Taraji was talking about Hollywood in general. So this is following back on the uh, Golden Globes. Uh, she made that those comments yesterday uh, at the award show on the red carpet with uh, Entertainment Tonight. And um, I don't know how much I believe it, man. Um, you know, Oprah is referencing one of the rooftop um, interviews that they did when they were doing their promo. Um, I don't have that clip right now, but I'm sure most of you have seen it by now. If you haven't, just Google it. Um, but not only that clip on the rooftop, but also just like how I've been hearing the things going. I feel like Taraji, um, is putting it out there. And the fact that, um, you know, Oprah just did the color purple with her. I feel like it's a little too significant that is right around this time. And it's not like Taraji has come out, you know, vehemently and had been like, no, I'm not talking about Oprah. And I just, I feel like it's a kind of like a, a double edged sword. It's like, Hey, I'm doing it during while I'm promoting color purple, but yeah, no, it's, she has said to be fair. She has said she doesn't mean op only Oprah. No, sorry. She, she has said that it was not Oprah, but. And now Oprah's coming now and saying this, and I just, I don't know how much I believe it. That, that's, that's all I'm saying. I think there may have been a little bit of riff 
um, between them and they, they maybe have kind of made up in the background and, and now they're just doing this kind of, you know, um, damage control. Who knows? Who knows? But um, anyways, for, for, for now, the two have said that there is no um, bad blood between them. I, of course, do not want bad blood. I'm, I'm not on that side because I love both of them. You know me. I'm, I'm a big Oprah fan and I love Taraji. So I, I hope that there's none. I just it just doesn't sound it sounds more like damage control to me personally. Um, but anyways, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, are, are, is there beef? Did you see the color purple? And uh, yeah, just let me know what you think. Tiger Woods and Nike has officially ended their partnership after 27 years. Um, this is a, um, actually, hold on. I think I have a statement over 27 years ago. I was fortunate. This is from Tiger Woods to Nike or to the public about his breakup with Nike over 27 years ago. I was fortunate to start a partnership with one of the most iconic brands in the world. The days since have been filled with so many amazing moments and memories. If I started naming them, I could go on forever. Phil Knight's passion and vision brought this Nike and Nike Golf partnership together, and I wanted to personally thank him along with the Nike employees and incredible athletes I have had the pleasure to work with along the way. People have asked if there is another chapter. Yes, there will certainly be another chapter. See you in, in LA. I wanted to read that to you because... Of course, both of them have to be like politically correct. Like, oh, thank you. And then um, Nike actually, um, I'll post this up on YouTube, but uh, they they have a they put a picture and they put it was a hell of a round tiger and tiger doing his you know fist pump with the Nike swoosh. So they're both kind of like making it seem like it's an amicable split. But what I find just a little bit weird is that. Um, you know, Serena Williams is still with Nike. LeBron James is still with Nike. LeBron James has a lifetime contract. Tiger Woods is the greatest golfer of all times, like hands down. Um, and like, I just don't understand why they would separate now at this time. Tiger Woods is still playing. He's still out there. Is he playing? And was is he at the heights that he was at before? No. Um, but I mean, Serena, neither Serena Williams. She's not on the court. She's still with Nike. So. I just feel like there was probably something going on in the background. And the fact that in his press release that, that I just read to you, the fact that he put in the fact that um, people have asking if there's another chapter and the answer is yes, that's him letting us know that he has other things in the work. So, yo, you know me, I'm a big golf fan. I'm a big Tiger fan. So um, we, we shall see what the next chapter will be. Will he have his own Will he have his own line? Will, you know, what does this mean for his son, Charlie, that that's, that's coming up? I, I thought Charlie was going to sign to Nike too, if Charlie decides to go, um, to go professional, but we shall see. But this is very interesting. Um, and not, sorry, how can I even talk about this without, without including Michael Jordan? So you have Michael Jordan still with Nike having his own line. You have LeBron James, you have Serena Williams. I mean, those are the four pretty much the most the four most iconic athletes that Nike um has ever signed. Yes, there's John McEnroe, et cetera, et cetera. But those are the four that are pretty much, you know, the best in their business and the best in their in their sport. So I just find this breakup a little bit weird. The only thing I can say is that Nike um created this line because of Tiger and now that he's not as dominant then I could see maybe they don't have anybody else kind of filling the shoes. Um, whereas in basketball, you have other Jordan athletes, you know, but, but who's out there wearing LeBron stuff? Like who's out there wearing Serena stuff? It just, it's just weird to me. It just, something just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't make sense. Kobe Bryant, there's another one. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. And you're telling me that golfers, like, like me and a lot of, um, like people who love the sport wouldn't want to continue wearing tiger apparel like you see that everywhere on the golf course like i I don't know it's just something doesn't make sense to me anyways let me know what you guys think in the comment section below uh let me know just yeah let me know what you think a teacher at an academic school has made a list of words and slangs that her students are not allowed to use in her classroom and it's gone viral of claims that she is being anti-black. All right, let me read to you some of the words on um, on this list, but more importantly, let me read to you the paragraph. The title is, these words slash sayings are prohibited in my classroom. If you are caught using these words, you will write a short essay explaining why you choose to words they use 
Jews, sorry, choose to use these words in an academic setting to express yourself. There are many ways to articulate what you need to say without using slang. Please know that using slang in an academic setting can tarnish your capability to become a successful writer. More often than not, the way you speak is the way you will write. The gibberish some of you choose to use is inappropriate English and sometimes inappropriate for an academic setting. This is an educational institution and you will carry yourself as scholars in my classroom. So anyways, I think most of you get that. Um, but so just let me let me actually just read the list. So I won't read all of them. There's 32 words. Bruh, standing on business. You ate that up. That's cap. What up, gang? Bet on God. On my mama, in the cut with my twin, just vibing, on bro, on hood, gang gang, the N word, on me, on set, freak you mean, period, big dog, just vibing twin, what up twin? So like, every word that I read there is a black slang word, and um, what I, what I, my take on this um, is not the fact that she is saying that the, these kids are not allowed to use slang words. This, listen carefully. I don't have a problem with her saying that these kids can't use slang words. This is an English institution. It's obviously a class about writing. So she has the right um, to say, hey, I don't want slang in my classroom because I want to teach you guys how to be amazing writers and often the way you speak is the way you write. So I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is her choosing every black slang word that we have in 2023, 24, pretty much. What she should have done is said, you're not allowed to use slang, period. <laughs> Sorry, I guess she'd be mad because I said period. But that would be better instead of singling out quote unquote, black urban terminologies, because there's a lot of white slang. And how come that white slang is allowed or Asian American or, uh, or native slang, right? So that is what, that's why I agree with people that it's, yo, you're just trying to be anti-black. And to add fuel to the fire, this woman, apparently this teacher is a black teacher. And a lot of people are like, yo, black people can't be racist, which I find is the most stupidest argument on the planet. Like, don't even let me get started. Like, there are black people that can be racist. So let's not get into that. But yeah, I just think that she had, um, her intentions may have been pure. I don't know, but they, they could be. And let, let's give her the benefit of doubt that they are pure. But where she went wrong is singling out. Why do you need to single out the slang? Say you're not allowed to use slang. And if you use slang, you're going to have to write an essay on why you did it. And that would cover everything. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you feel like this list is anti-black? Um, and, and do you feel like it is um, okay for a teacher to tell you know, her English students or her, in, her or a writing class that they're not allowed to use slang. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Okay, the question of the day. Have you ever stayed with somebody just because the benefits were too good to leave? I found like this was such a good question because I feel like, honestly, like 70, 80, maybe 90, let's say 85% of people that are in bad relationships are only staying because the benefits are so good. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen to my words carefully. I didn't say that 85% are in a bad relationship. Uh, sorry. I didn't say that 85% are at in bad relationships, meaning that there's only 15% good relationships. Just want to make that clear. I'm just saying of the bad relationships, I feel like 80% of the reasons why people don't leave bad relationships is because of the benefits, whether they be sexual benefits, whether it be money benefits, whether it be, you know, guys just, yeah, you know, stay with my girl because she cooks, cleans, and takes care of me, or women saying, yo, my guy, you know, he's, you know, he makes a lot of money, he treats me like a princess, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like people um, um, do that a lot. Um, and um, to answer the question, I, don't think that I have stayed in a relationship, but it has, I have definitely prolonged leaving a relationship because the benefits were so good. Thousand percent. I actually think 
anybody that says that they haven't prolonged, I think is lying, but stayed, you know, I leave that up to y'all to, to admit the truth. Um, but I mean, I, I, I don't think that I've let it prolong more than a few months. Um, you know, just, it's like, Oh, gonna miss this. And like, Oh, you know, like, it might be better, but ugh. But then at the end of the day, man, you got to make um, the overall decision and you can't let the, um, you know, the, the, the small amount of good outweigh the bad. There, you know, um, there's things that are more important out there, like, you know, like values. Those are things you can't break, um, you know, um, trust, like whatever. Let, let's not name all of them, but like whatever your values are, you can't let you know, some superficial, some superficial benefits, um, outweigh, uh, the things that you hold valuable to you in a relationship. So yeah, that's just my two cents on that question, but I thought it was a really, really good question. And I think I really like my answer. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and be honest. All right, let's get into sports news. Um, I'm going to just list to you everything and then we'll talk about it after. Um, Draymond Green has been reinstated um, after a 12 game suspension. We have the wild card picture for the NFL. And let's talk quickly about um, college football national championship. Who are you going for, um, uh, Michigan or Washington? First, let's talk about Draymond. I particularly think that. If you suspend Jaw for 25, that that should set a precedent. Um, and I think Draymond um, should have gotten more than 12, somewhere in the 20 um, or 25 range uh, to kind of, you know, just because Jaw was, um, w w they made such a big deal about Jaw and the suspension. So I don't think um, suspending um, uh, Draymond for, for 12 games was enough, just based on that. You, you have to set precedent. Um, but Having said that, shout out to Draymond because when the NBA said that they were going to suspend him indefinitely, they said that it was up to him to show them that he's been rehabilitated. So I, you know, he's went to classes and he had to, you know, speak with them and do whatever. So, you know, again, playing devil's advocate, you know, maybe he did enough to wow them and jaw when, you know, he was going through the second time showing a gun on Instagram live, he was saying, you know, it's a water gun. Oh, you know, the NBA has it out against me. So maybe he wasn't doing, um, you know, he wasn't following the, um, uh, you know, he wasn't doing what the NBA was looking for him to do um, as a, uh, as far as, you know, showing that he's sorry and that he's apologetic and that he's rehabilitated. So regardless, I just still think that it's not enough, but, you know, those are the reasons. Let's look at this uh, wild card picture. We got... Houston versus Cleveland. We got Kansas City versus Miami, Buffalo versus Pittsburgh. I keep telling you guys, the AFC is the far better league and far more exciting lead league. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, uh, gets the first round by They were the number one seed in the division. Um, everybody says that Browns has, you know, the defense and Flacco. Um, although, you know, Texans have, um, oh my gosh, CJ Stroud. I'm going to go with, with Houston just for, um, CJ, Kansas City and Miami. That's, that's obviously the best game next week. Um, I'm going for Kansas City. We don't even have to know if Miami does win. I don't mind because my teams are Kansas City, um, Baltimore and Miami. So Miami would, would be the team that I would want to advance if it's not Kansas City out of the wild card. Buffalo, Pittsburgh. I think that's going to be a good game. Um, but the way how um, Josh Allen is playing, like, yo, Buffalo, I'm not going to say that they could beat Baltimore, but because um, Josh Allen is a more experienced quarterback, if they do beat Pittsburgh and they do end up beating wh whoever the next per people is that they play and they make it to, um, to, to play Baltimore, although I will be going for Baltimore, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Allen wins because he's that much of a, of a really good quarterback. We saw what Tua did throwing an interception. These young quarterbacks, same thing when I, I go to talk about um, the NFC. Um, yo, young quarterbacks in these big playoff situations, they make mistakes, man. It's it's when you're seasoned and when you have the experience um, in playoffs and, and Super Bowls that, that makes the difference. But anyways, like, 
that that's that's my thoughts on AFC. NFC, we have Tampa Bay versus Philly, uh, Detroit versus um, LA, and Dallas versus Green Bay. Um, I'm gonna pick Philly against Tampa Bay. I'm gonna pick Detroit over LA and Dallas. I mean, they're playing at home. Dak, th- that could be an upset, but I'm gonna go for Dak. Um, I really don't think San Francisco is gonna make it to the Super Bowl personally. I don't know the NFC like. Whoever goes from the NFC is going to lose anyways to anybody on the AFC. But I, I don't know, man. I think definitely Philly. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they could change things around. Detroit's also good. I don't know. I'm going to say probably Dallas. It might end up being Dallas and San Francisco. San Francisco might end up going, but I don't know. Maybe maybe Dallas or, or maybe Detroit. But anyways, that's not my league. AFC is my league. Um, and lastly, tonight in college football, um, actually, just to let you all know, if you don't know already, there won't be any Monday night games to make room, Monday night NFL games to make room for people to watch the college championship. I thought that was really dope of the NFL supporting um, the college players. Um, Michigan versus Washington. In transparency, uh, full transparency, I'm not a big um, college football fan um, at all. Um, even in, in, in basketball, I know a lot of people are NCAA, but, um, uh, I did catch a couple of the bowl games. Um, Michigan is undefeated, but, um, because of the, the cheating rumors and the cheating allegations. And I, I asked last time I talked about college, if I, I should just Google it on my own, but if anybody knows what happened with the allegations that he was the coach found guilty, like what's going on, Harbaugh, like, Somebody let me know in the comment section below. But I think because of that, I'm going to go for the underdog. I'm going for Washington. Let me know what you co- think in the comment section below. Who are you going for? Um, should, um, uh, should, um, oh my gosh, should Michigan uh, have been allowed in with the cheating allegations? Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn it Loud. Peace! Go to signupexpert.com forward slash Trent. And then once you sign up for all betting apps and get all your bonuses and get all your rewards, go to your app store and download BetStamp and use promo code TOL.